Kansas, where Big 12 women's volleyball takes center stage. Ninth-ranked Kansas looks to extend a seven-match win streak behind an efficient offense. Iowa State, meanwhile, searching for their second consecutive win while battling injuries. It's Kansas and Iowa State coming up here at Horsch Family Volleyball Arena. Hello, everyone, and welcome courtside. So happy to have you here alongside the former Kansas libero, Jill Dorsey Hall. I'm Kylan Mills. Iowa State and Kansas have played some incredible battles through the years. They split five setters one season ago, and you told me you think this is going to be the same. I do. Iowa State is very well coached, a great program, and they come in here and play exceptional ball handling skills and their court defense. Was it going to present some issues for for Kansas, who's known for their efficient offense this year. Iowa State's offense has also gotten a boost recently from outside Rachel Van Gorp, recently been playing in the front row. What has she brought to the attack? In the 5'9", true freshman, a Kansas native, as you mentioned, started it as a libero, but due to injuries, moved it outside here, and she's a smart player. Incredible ball control with her platform skills, but also her ability to hit multiple angles, and she averaged a double-double last week and can put pressure with her serve. On the other side for Kansas, setting the table is Cameron Turner, the reigning Big 12 setter of the year, doing what she always does. And the 5 1 system, she just fills up the stats. She runs a very balanced offense for Kansas. She has a tough serve, lights out defense behind, but she's the engine for this team. She is fantastic all around player for Kansas. The 105th meeting between Kansas and Iowa State Volleyball coming your way. They've split the last 10 matchups in the series. Forish Family Volleyball Arena getting loud. First serve coming up next. Welcome back into Horish Family Volleyball Arena. It is Big 12 Women's Volleyball here on FS1. Ninth ranked Kansas hosting Iowa State for a battle, and it always is a battle between these two programs. The stands are packed once again. Kylan Mills and Jill Dorsey Hall here on the call with you. Appreciate you being here as we get you set for some action. How about Kansas State head coach, or Kansas head coach, rather, Ray Bouchard in his 27th season at the helm, a five-time Big 12 coach of the year, including back in 2023, has led the Jayhawks to 12 NCAA tournaments, including the last three seasons, Jill, and now they want more. To take a look at the starting lineup now for Kansas. Both teams have dealt with some injuries. A notable absence here, Tayosi on a banjo, not in this lineup. Who else are you looking at to step up here? Well, the two freshmen for Kansas, you have, you have Reese Patak and then Zoe Burgess, true freshmen in both of those middle blocker positions, but they're loaded with veterans other than that. So you have London Davis, Cameron Turner, Caroline Bien, Ayel Nadi all filling up the lineup for Kansas. Over for Iowa State before we take a look at the starters. Here's head coach Christy Johnson Lynch in her 20th season leading this program. Currently owns 206 Big 12 victories, which is the fourth most all time. Once again, in her 20th season, has led Iowa State to 16 NCAA tournament appearances. However, this year the group has been battling injuries, a number of notable absences in this projected starting lineup. Who are you looking for to step up for the Cyclones? I, I think you have to look at Brooke Stone Street, the libero, holding it down from a serve and pass perspective. She covers a great deal of court in the back row. And then Rachel Van Gorp, we talked about the true freshman and the outside hitter duty is number 10 right there. And then they also have some live arms and they move to a 6-2 system. So they're going to see two setters running the show and three live arms at all times for Iowa State. And that's something that Kansas is going to have to manage because of three live arms at all times. Whereas Kansas runs a 5-1 system. So Cameron Turner running the show for Kansas. Something to note for the Cyclone sophomore outside, Nayeli Gonzalez out for the season, suffered a season-ending in knee injury just a couple weeks ago, so that's a big absence out on the pins. And Pam McCune also did not travel with the team. Middle blocker leads the team also fifth in the Big 12 in blocks per set at 1.16 as we are moments away from first serve. Caroline Bien. Schmidt. Puts it down for the Cyclones. Point number one on the board. We talked to Chrissy Johnson Lynch. Their head coach has done such a phenomenal job with the Cyclones. She says, you know, we've got to keep working, and they have. And she's been proud of how their team has stuck together through this, this patch. Of, they lost three players in a matter of 24 hours not too long ago with Gonzalez going down and then McCune and Duckworth. And Gorp with the serve, but London Davis with the response. London Davis, the opposite for Kansas, a veteran player with a heavy arm swing. That's a high, deep winner for Davis. She can be the X factor for Kansas. Earns with the serve. 
Out on the pin, going cross court. However, Kansas point as it does go wide. Attempt there by Schmidt once again. This time out of play. Sophomore libero Reagan Burns back at the service line. Big cross court kill there. Durandi puts it down. Durandi can get on the ball in a hurry. Such a fast arm swing. It's a fun to watch her go to work with this approach and quick through the zone, deep into the floor. Kearney Jackson, the junior middle blocker, now back at the service line for the Cyclones. And she's one to watch at the service line. She went on a run in her last victory. It's full of scoring run. <laughs> Right back to Davis on the right side. Senior opposite London Davis getting it done for the Jayhawks. Two and 22 kill performance against Purdue. Her highlight of her senior campaign in that match. Quick set to the middle. Hendricks Walker getting in on the action. Hendricks Walker coming off a tremendous performance. 10 kills, no errors, and 15 swings in their last sweep at Texas Tech. And just up available over the top, too. That's a nice shot deep into the floor. Hendricks Walker transferring in from South Florida. Redshirt junior playing in the middle for the Cyclones. And they slide there. Patek gets the foot down there. And Reese Patek coming on strong. In her freshman year, they play the beginning of the season. Boise on a banjo out for the night. And so it's Reese Attack in that M1. Attack earning her first career start against West Virginia back on the 10th. Has been lights out ever since. But up the middle is the response. Hendricks Walker getting a couple of swings here early. Exceptional first contact from Van Gorp on the back row that allows for the middle to go to work. And so you just on a platter there, every option available. Something he talked a lot about was the great ball control this Iowa State team has. Patak kept in play. And Gorp from the back row, El Nadi. Off hands, nice rally here. Swanson kept alive. Free ball over. Once again, off hands. Swanson goes long. It is called a point for Iowa State. And no touch extended rally in the Cyclones. You can see how their sideline are fired up because exceptional defense on the backcourt, making Kansas work throughout this rally. And then going for high hands just misses them. Back at the service line, Paula Kaischlack. Nice block from the Cyclones. Swanson tries again. Off hands and down for Wackeltz. Being the rally again was Iowa State throughout this getting stronger and stronger, and then it's a smart shot off the top of the hands. Ashlack to serve again. The freshman, Reese Patak, into the lineup. Has made a splash the last couple of matches. Named the Big 12 Rookie of the Week. Had a 690 hitting percentage on the week. Of the team against Cincinnati with 13 kills at 813, for example. Pretty efficient, you could say. Very much so. And she had a double-double against Kansas State in the epic five-set victory last Thursday night. 11 kills, 11 blocks. There's another fantastic freshman getting it done, this time for the Cyclones, Rachel Van Gorp. This is a crazy at 5-9, just slicing and dicing on the outside pin. Has that ability to move the ball around, kind of shifts her hand, placement on the ball. Service error leads to a side out for the Jayhawks. They trail by one here in the first set. To the service line is the senior setter Cameron Turner was just recently named to the ABCA National Player of the Year watch list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holtz puts it down. 
took a touch, so another point for the Cyclones. Perfectly in system once again, and that's the thing about the Cyclones team. It's hard to get them out of system with how good they can ball control and primary pass in service reception. Richard Sockman are averaging more than two and a half kills per set coming into this one. Service error for Emily Bobbitt. Point Jayhawks. The senior outside, Caroline Vienne, back to the service line. Brings in 18 aces on the season. Quick little back set to Jackson. Point for the Cyclones. That's the aspect of her game that Christy Johnson Lynch was excited about. Her running that slide off one foot, the transfer from West Virginia into the program, has came on strong as of late because of the absence of Pam McHugh in the other middle. That did not travel with the team, but they, they hope to have her back soon. Big swing, even bigger block. Jackson getting involved defensively, too. Jackson and Schmidt right there, ready to make the play. For Van Gore, back to the service line. Jones to the net, leads to a point for the Cyclones. That violation call. Richard with some questions. About the call, and a timeout is going to be called here on the floor. Iowa State coming out strong here in Lawrence, Kansas. 11-7 the lead after a 3-0 scoring run. Iowa State flying high in the early going. Cyclones brewing up an upset here in Lawrence, Kansas. They have the serve here on a 3-0 run in set number one. He alluded in the open to some of the meetings between these two teams. It was a pair of five setters a season ago that Iowa State and Kansas split. Cyclones won the first 3-2. Kansas won the next one 3-2. Back in November last year. El Nadi. Kansas creeping back in. A first ball side out for the Jayhawks. Exactly what they needed to end that 3-0 scoring run because Van Gorp puts a lot of pressure with her serve from the service line, so they stop that scores service run, but they have not been able to slow down Iowa State right now, hitting 583 already in this first set. And an error will send the ball right back to the Cyclones, who are hitting 583 here through the first set. And truly, their setter hasn't had to move. I mean, it's been a perfect plat pass on a platter. So you have to credit their ability, and that was one of the strengths when we talked to Kristen. Chrissy Johnson Lynch, she said, you know, we, we feel good about how we're able to ball handle in primary pass. El Nadi goes over the block. Schmidt. This is called point. Cyclones took a touch. That's something, though, that Kansas coach Ray Bichard also talked about was their ball control. You can't just hit anywhere. Yeah, you can't hit anywhere because it, it, their court defense behind, not just in first primary passing, but also their defense. And you can see Van Gorp with the dig that led to that transition kill for Iowa State. And, and just another smart attack high off the hands. Anadi looking for a second kill. And it is going to go down. Point Jayhawks. Tierney Jackson's gonna laugh That's their middle blocker <laughs> trying to get, follow that one out of the ceiling and it was, it was pinballing around. One thing about Tierney Jackson <laughs> is that she is pretty versatile. She's actually had a dig in the last nine straight matches. She'll, she'll get it done too defensively. Gonna do her part. Dip over the block by Schmidt. El Naughty. Big swing cross courts. Point Cyclones. Once again, not trying to challenge the Kansas block, but a deep cross court. And she knew right after it hit her off of her hand, she knew that she had enough court space. She said, yep, no, that one's in. I found that one. It was inside the sideline. Faith Durandi, another one of the players, stepping up in light of recent injuries for the Cyclones after previously playing primarily in the back row. 
there's a service error. So side out here for the Jayhawks. Durandi coming in averaging just over 1.1 kills per set. Getting more involved here in the attack during the latest stretch. Almost an overpass there. Nice up. Swanson met with the block. Crafty move. Durandi gets the point for the Cyclones. Smart shot after smart shot. Impressive even to find this. And then the placement. Out of middle back could not run that down. Five point lead now for Iowa State. Swanson. Nice up again. Stone Street. Time to cross court shot. A little too strong. Out of play. This is true to specialized now from the service line. It was the pack that went and served the first time around, and she went to the service line, but decided to go with Grace Nelson, number one, the true freshman. She's an outside hitter, but she can come in and provide some pressure from the service line. This is that one. It's definitely an aspect of the game so far that Iowa State is winning that serve and pass battle so far in set number one. Grace Nelson with three aces on the season, had two of them against UCF in Kansas's last match. So maybe serving hot, you look to keep hot play going. Sends it right back over for Iowa State. Swanson. Good hustle here from the Cyclones. Still in play though. Birds with the defense. Right off the block and down. The Jayhawks defense comes up big. And Ryan Swanson finding herself in the lineup because of this physicality. They like her play at the net. You can see this big block pushing inside, sealing the net nicely. Outside hitter provides that physicality on the outside pin. Swanson coming off a couple of nice outings, eight kills against UCF. Little miscommunication, free ball over. Nice up. Stone Street. Point for the Cyclones. Iowa State with a five point lead here in this first set. Come down to life a little bit, but still hitting 429 compared to 211 for a Kansas team that's among the leaders in the country in terms of their offensive efficiency. Bob at service. Watson gets the point. Kansas trailing by four. I'm trying to target Ryan Swanson because she's a live primary attacker in this, this rotation, but it's a little bit of a give and go. Handles that ball nicely. It was a line to line serve. Swanson, the junior outside, actually did a career high 15 kills against Iowa State as a freshman back in 2022. Coming alive here for the Jayhawks. Alnadi blocks it right back over. Jackson fired up. One of the first scoring opportunities for Kansas within this set, but then it was the block for Iowa State to put this one away. I mean, perfectly timed together. It's now been in, involved in a couple blocks for Iowa State. I'm naughty. Put down by Jackson. Cyclones extend the lead to six. At clicking on all cylinders is Iowa State. And we keep in mind for Kansas, they're without Toyosi on a banjo, one of their emotional, fiery leaders for the Jayhawks. So Kansas is going to have to make some adjustments right now because Iowa State's doing everything that they want in this set. Big kill, big up. put back down. Burgess gets the point for Kansas. 
And Chrissy Johnson Lynch is up in a hurry, wanting to know if Zoe Burgess impeded with this before it crossed the plane of the net. Watching this kind of a bang bang play. Point stays here with Kansas. Buckmore libero, Reagan Burns back to serve, averaging more than 3.3 digs per set. The block by Schmidt. El Naughty, huge swing. Kept in play, Stone Street, great defense. El Naughty, Stone Street again. This time, can't keep it in play. Well, it's going to take a lot to get the ball down on Sun Street as she's displayed. I mean, covering a great deal of space. But this time around, second attempt for El Nadi. She just had one blocker up and was able to exploit it. A little error there from Schmidt. Point for Kansas. They're sticking around here. Tough serve. Durandi gets the kill. And that's Durandi just making a play with that heavy arm swing, going after that angle. It's too much pace. It's Iowa State team coming off a sweep of Texas Tech. Durandi with 10 kills in that one. He's perfect on the evening, four of four. El Naughty. Gonna touch off the block, it looked like. We've seen a couple different looks for the Kansas Jayhawks on who is gonna get the ability to swing on the outside pin. El Naughty had been playing back row as of late, but decided to go switch Caroline Bien and Ryan Swanson in this match. So some versatility and depth on the side of the Jayhawks this year. E serve. And back row out of play. Point Kansas, they're not going away. This is a Jayhawks team too that dealt with some adversity a couple matches back in their match against Kansas State. The first five setter of the season for this Kansas squad. They went down 2-1 in sets. Were able to battle as an error here will give a point to Iowa State. But this is a team that had to show some grit, had to show some resilience. Maybe not the start they want here. Now how do they respond? And it's a, it's a veteran team sprinkling with some newbies as well, some true freshmen playing in critical key positions. Attack kept up though. Tip over. Al Nadi. Trying to find the line. Does go out of play. Point for the Jayhawks. Two point set number one here underway in Lawrence. That rally though is great evidence of how difficult it is to find the floor as Grant made it a tremendous dig in right back. Walkholtz just missed that attempt wide, but it is difficult to find the floor against the Cyclones. Huge swing. Rondi. That time keeps it up, but sent right back down. Carolyn Bien, point Jayhawks. And so they offered to keep Caroline Bien in the front row. So Ryan Swanson not checked back in, decided to go with the senior, making a veteran play. But how about the defense on the back row? Bryn McGee, one of the best stories on the side of the Jayhawks this year, the defensive specialist playing in the right back position, holding it down. Kansas ties up set number one. 21 apiece, and the gym is rocking. Fans in the stands, they're loving it. Pride night underway. Some student athletes in the stands here as Iowa State and ninth ranked Kansas are battling down to the wire here in set number one. 21 21 the score.
this Kansas team been able to turn things around a 3-0 scoring run Jill what's been the difference during this last stretch five ties two lead changes with all the momentum is in the Jayhawks favor right now I mean they just con continue to stay calm and then increase their level of play they're getting some positive touches at the plane of the net to slow some of these Iowa State attacks down and then they've just stuck with it and Coach Richard has said this all year he's like you know we have the veterans on the team and they just never back down and a lot of to do with Cameron Turner the senior set her there a good look at the all-american off the block kept in play by patak bien again again hi to durandi durandi again push deep Wow, great defense. What a rally. And finally, the ball falls on Iowa State side. Kansas takes the lead here late in set number one. An all out spread for both sides. And a tight ball as this rally goes on. And a setter dunk that was perfectly read by Bryn McGee on the back row. The defense from Stone Street on the back row, but then that ball too tight. And because your setter's coming from the back row, can't go up and challenge that at the plane of the net, which makes it difficult. And one of those things when you run a 6 2. And that was, again, a violation. And that's Grant trying to stay out of the net, but I think Cross, you know, the 4 0 now run for the Jayhawks. 5 0, excuse me, 5 0 run. Timeout on the floor now is head coach Christy Johnson Lynch is going to try to regroup this Iowa State team that is trying to thwart a 5-0 run for Kansas. What do the Cyclones need to do to try to shift the momentum back in their favor? Well, get back to what was working for you in the beginning of the set and say, hey, hey, we're a good ball control team. Focus on, the, focus on this primary pass, have all three options available, and also bring the ball off the net just a little bit. Try to just J-stroke that ball a little bit more, take off that. Yeah, those tough balls, even though they're attacking and trying to get some more back spin, so give your setter a little bit more space off the net. Meanwhile, the Kansas offense starting to come to life. It's interesting looking at the stats of these two teams, dead even in a lot of categories, 18 digs apiece, hitting 205, and then Kansas hitting 237. But on the season, they've been fantastic. I mean, top to bottom, as you look at the numbers nationally, hitting percentage, kills per set, assists per set as well. Does that all start, do you think, with Cameron Turner? Yeah, I mean, a lot to do with it. I mean, she's the engine of the machine for Kansas, not only with her great setting ability, but just her ability to read the game and came on campus under-recruited. The like coach Richard said, he goes, you know, she was a player that we identified even at camp and going up from nearby Topeka, Kansas, that she, whatever environment Cameron Turner was in, she made that team better. She certainly has made the Kansas program better throughout her career. But Christy Johnson Lynch has to be pleased with her team right here, though, in this first set. We see one side out as we're going to get quite tight here as we finish this first set out. Edge of our seats here as El Naughty will serve once again, looking to extend a 5 0 run. Almost an ace. Stone Street with great D. Kept in play again. Bien. That's the kill. Kansas closing in on a first set win. And if it, that's not evidence enough of how difficult it is to find the floor against Iowa State, Kansas stop that ball. Ed Rowley was over, but continue to play on and continue to stay calm and steady throughout and finishing off fittingly so. What a late explosion for the Jayhawks, a 7-0 scoring run. Secure set number one, 25-21. Fans going wild. Ayel Nadi leading the charge with four kills, and Caroline Bien with the kill shot. Kansas leading 1-0. About her career has, has really filled up the stat sheet in a multitude of ways, offensively, defensively lights it up from the service line and she was critical for the Jayhawks in that first set when they went on the run a 7-0 scoring run to end that set one with a victory when it looked bleak for Kansas but they continue to stick with it in a veteran squad it's a difficult team to beat because they are so balanced and any player at any given night can put up big numbers 
a veteran squad for Kansas, and you add in a top five recruiting class in terms of the youth, Coach Bouchard has a lot to be excited about. Aya El Nadi, also a three time All Big 12 honoree, was named to the first team a season ago, also a Midwest All Region first team selection. Currently with 2.66 kills per set, at least coming into this one as we get ready for set number two. On the precipice of a thousand career kills, Aya El Nadi is for the Jayhawks. And a new lineup change, a giant change for Kansas as Aisha Iono, number 24 for the Jayhawks, is going to play in the middle blocker position. So showing some depth in that middle blocker position. Again, Toyosi on a banjo out tonight with injury that she suffered against Kansas State last Thursday. Coach Bouchard mentioned Iono would get some time on the floor, had a big block against UCF last match. Big swing from... The right side, it is out of play. Point Iowa State. Freshman setter Emily Bobbitt back to the service line for the Cyclones. Recently has been playing more a setter as they switch to a 6-2. In light of some of the injuries they've dealt with. Oh, Upper double contact. The rule change, you can double the second on your side of the floor, but if it's on that third contact over the net, that still is called. You can see it just doesn't come out cleanly off the hands of Davis on a broken play. El Nadi puts it down, point Jayhawks, and there is the 1,000th career kill for Aya El Nadi. What an accomplishment for the Jayhawks senior outside. Huge congratulations to Aya El Nadi. Number 1,000 right there, and fittingly so, deep into the floor. Burns there with the ace, 2-2 now the score. Kansas tying things up here in the second set. Aya El Nadi, a leader in this program, now with 1,000 career kills. The Jayhawks look to keep this scoring run going. Schmidt can't get it over. The discipline block from Kansas and London Davis has not let her right arm hand get tools, able to push that back into the floor. Good handwork at the point of the net with the block. Kansas block doing it again. And then this time, London Davis. Good awareness and I work here to help in providing that double block right in time. Third block of the match for the Jayhawks. <laughs> Point Cyclones. The ball on a platter, every option available, and Tierney Jackson off one foot. Printed turned it over the net. Service error sends the ball back to Kansas. We look at an ace to error ratio as the match get, plays out, and the strength for both of these teams is their ability to, to pass extremely well with that primary pass. So both teams are going to go back and try to be aggressive from the service line. Bit of an overpass there for Iowa State. El Naughty. Denied. Big swing from Schmidt. Point Cyclones. Great set selection here. Just have that understanding. You go to that right side and deep into the floor. Iowa State attackers have done a solid job just finding that deep, deep part of the floor, cross court. Jackson with the serve. On the slide, Patak. Point Cyclones though, she's denied. All tied up here in set number two. Jackson back to the service line at aces in the last three matches. El Nadi with a big rip. 
for Alnati sets this up because throughout the first set she was going cross at different angles. And so it's almost a look away then to the line. Alnati leads the Jayhawks six kills, hitting 333. Tough serve. It is going to be called a point for Kansas. They had four contacts, so they thought it hit an, an arm of the Cyclones, and I, I think I agree with that. To continue to put pressure from the service line, leads the Jayhawks in that category. 25 aces on the season. Rondi with the swing. Overpass. Great hustle. Swanson gets it down. Point Jayhawks. <laughs> Again, it takes a lot. I mean, that ball, you think it's going to go down and then continue to keep fighting and gritting through points. And you do have to give a tip of the cap to the Cyclones, who's had to endure, as we mentioned, numerous injuries throughout their lineup. Swanson with her second kill. Durandi. Burns kept it alive. Swanson again. Durandi. Oh, how about the dumb Cameron Turner? So smart. And so deceptive. Cameron Turner fills up the stat sheet, now getting involved in the kill category. The Southpaw, she's a lefty, and so that's her strong hand to put it down. 9-5 Kansas with the lead after a 4-0 scoring run. The Jayhawks taking control here in set number two. We step aside for a quick break. 4-0 scoring run here in the second set with Ayel Nadi back at the service line. She also leads the team with six kills, hitting 312 on the night. Tough serve from El Nadi. Free ball. Attack. Durandi, crafty shot, finds the floor. And she absolutely sold that one. Everybody was thinking she was going to go wind up because of that quick arm swing. This change up, if you will, beautiful roll shot. Durandi once again stepping up big. Ten kills against Texas Tech. Seven kills against BYU. One match prior since sliding up to that front row. How about a bullet though from Putak? He's the tag. Very comfortable on that slide. Off one foot. A solid adjustment because she had just hit it different angles. So she makes that adjustment. Find the deeper part of the floor. Back now with four kills, hitting 300, one dig and two blocks as she serves. Durandi. Their slide. Iono. Big swing and the kill. Faith Durandi has been on fire tonight. Bolsha and then the fiery attack right back, and then she's able to get through this block before it was fully formed. Has that seam, and she exploits it. Ashlack with the serve. Swanson. Quick set sent right back over. Iona was ready for it. Swanson finds the floor. Point Jayhawks. And tremendous elevation, Ryan Swanson. Watch her rise up, pretty back swing, and then able to go up and sit down. Oh, I see that line, and I'm going to go go ahead and go right after it. Oh, nice little set to the middle. Hendricks Walker getting back involved. <laughs> I would say it's going to have to continue to do in system and that quick attack. Continue to get their middles the ball if they can. As I mentioned, coming off a great performance. 10 kills, no errors on 15 attempts in their most recent victory. Oh. 
Watson goes out of play, point Cyclones. Young Street all over that one. Puts eyes on it, knowing that ball is going to go wide. In your libero, Brooks Stone Street back to the service line. Tenth in the Big 12 and digs per set. Just rolls off the net. Unfriendly there to Rachel Van Gorp. Point KU. Caroline Bian checking in for the Jayhawks, coming off a four ace performance in that victory against UCF. So she can certainly put pressure on with her serve. A flat floater. Second on the team in digs per set and aces. There's a tough serve. Oh, what a hammer there. Asia Iono. Coach Richard has huge praise for Iono and she goes to work. He says she studies film. She's a student of the game, continues to work. Very cerebral. You can see discipline on some touch blocks at that time, offense involved. Played last match against UCF. Prior to that, hadn't played since September 25th, also against UCF. Big swing from the back row. Caroline Bien finds the floor with a deep shot. And that gives Coach Richard off the sideline. And clapping, you can hear him throughout saying, be available, Bien, on the back row. We call that available. Four kills now for Bien. Nadi with the block. Occult's. Another block. Free ball over. Big time rally. And Gorb finishes the point. Gorp at 5'9". What a great story about how wearing the libero jersey to start this season and then due to some injuries. I have that ability. was a fabulous six rotation players all throughout high school. It has that ability to go six rotations if needed. And Gorp also a Kansas native and second on the team in digs per set to your point about how efficient she was and effective she was defensively before transitioning to being a six rotation player. However, it is a service error from Emily Bobbitt. <laughs> El Naughty. <laughs> Finds the floor, point Jayhawks. And I El Naughty makes that play because she reached back. She was at the net blocking and watched this one arm stab back. Caroline Bien lays it up then for her. To roll shot over. I mean, that's just a crafty play from a veteran. Naughty with seven kills to lead the Jayhawks. Jackson. And Gorp. El Naughty. Tooled off the block, point Kansas. And as we saw in set number one, Kansas continue to get momentum and stronger and stronger, doing just that here in second set in every phase. Rio scoring run for the Jayhawks, 17-10, now a seven-point lead in the second set. Aya El Naughty lighting it up, eight kills on the night, hitting 389. The things that Chrissy Johnson Lynch said. She's, you know, you know, it's a kind of a little bit more wide open now with the departure of a program like Texas. And who can go ahead and grab the Big 12 this season? Gorp trying to grab the kill. It is a point for Kansas. Your point, though, just about the conference opening up. I do feel like this is the time for this Kansas team to shine. They come in 7-0. They've rattled off seven straight wins. They finished second in the Big 12 a year ago. And it seems like just everything is working in their favor. Everything's clicking this season. 
have the depth, they have the pieces, and they have the right mentality. The, the seniors that, you know, it matters a little bit more when it's your last go round. Quite the rally underway here. A diving effort, not there. Point Cyclones. That's a point that you take for Iowa State and say, okay, little by little, just chip away, not all, all at one time. Rachel Van Gorp back at the service line. By Olathe, Kansas, not too far from Lawrence, Kansas. Diving effort there. Free ball. Oh, how about the swing for Myono? She has come in and made a difference. Yeah, that was London Davis on the right side. The senior has hit a heavy ball, and, and both offensively and defensively tonight, she's provided both for the Jayhawks. Those two blocks. The senior, fun fact, the only player from the state of Ohio that came through this Kansas volleyball program. One for KU on the attack arrow there from Faith Durandi, but yes, London Davis with the last point for KU. Big arm. Galena, Ohio native, and actually the first Ohio individual to play for this KU team, which is surprising. Durandi. Tough one to pull out of the net. Point Cyclones. Jackson going back to the service line. Four kills, hitting 571 here as the Cyclones look to make up an eight-point depth. Her serve, they went on a 12-0 run against Texas Tech with Jackson on the service line. But just like that, it's been the hot hand of El Nadi, such a competitor. Hearing double digits already with her nine, but just one air, so low air, very efficient, and she's nearing a double-double. Nine kills, 10 digs. Taking the team on her back tonight. Aya El Nadi getting her a thousandth kill and then some. Durandi. Watson gets the point. KU closing in on set number two. And Swanson flying through the air with that elevate elevation. That's her up and away over the top. And that's coming from a really intense angle down into the floor. And he takes a tip shot to find the opening. Onsen now with four kills. Al Naughty flying out of the back row. Great defense though by the Cyclones. Swanson denied. Swanson changes it up this time. Flying from the back row is Van Gorp. El Naughty sent right back over. Cyclones really battling for every single point and every single inch. Come to expect from a team that Chrissy Justin Lynch coaches and has done such a fantastic job in her 20 years at Iowa State. Has completely turned that program into a, a tournament team year after year. Swanson hammers it. <laughs> She goes with finesse and then with power. See that contact point. The point about Johnson Lynch has led this program to 16 NCAA tournament appearances in her 20th season at the helm. Model of consistency. In terms of always getting this team there as a service error leads to a point for her Cyclones. Thing for Coach Bouchard before he arrived oh, at the Kansas had not made it to the NCAA tournament, but he was able to do that, led his team to a national semifinal. So both these coaches very respected in the Big 12 and has done it for quite some time for both sides. Swanson gets the point for Kansas. Set point coming for the Jayhawks. Fans parting like rock stars here. In Lawrence. Cameron Turner back at the service line. 
Iowa State says, yeah, not yet. Mitchell Van Gorp and others getting involved. Beautiful connection on that quick. Hackett just beats the block in system. Rick's Walker with her fourth kill. Twenty-five, fifteen. the final here. Kansas takes the second set after taking the first 25-21. Aya El Nadi flying high here in Lawrence. Nine kills to lead this attack. Team hitting 284. Kansas now with a two-set lead. Both for some of her weapons there at the net. Once again, more than 11 assists per set leads the Big 12 among the leaders in the country. Top three. An ABCA National Player of the Year watch list selection just named this week. A 12 assists in set number one and 14 in set number two, and it keeps the the opponent off balance because she is very deceptive on where she's going to set the ball and also too if she needs to she can be offensively minded with that left hand but she really does it all for the Jayhawks Turner an All-America honorable mention selection a season ago continuing to lead the charge and this is a Kansas team that swept so many teams this season once again when they played K-State back on the 17th that was their first five setter Outside of that, though, three of their last four wins have been 3-0 sweeps. Ten on the season as well. So this is a team that's used to getting it done quickly, getting it done efficiently. And once they find their groove, as they have here, it seems like they can't lose it. And they trust each other. I mean, you look at a core of players that have been on the floor for their entirety of their career in the end. In Turner, London Davis has been a three-year starter. It's the second year for Toyota on a banjo. And then the infusion of some youth. Reagan Burns was a starting libero as a freshman last year for Kansas. So they have the veterans, but also some new pieces. And there's a lot to like. And the steady coaching as well. I mean, the, their associate head coaches have been within the program for a number of years as well. Bien. Oh, the hammer for my Ono. Make a quick conversation with the up official because that was called, I think, to end that second set, kind of the throw, and, and certainly with them, they, they, that rally, they thought Caroline Bien had thrown that ball, and so it would have been a call. No call, play goes on. So I certainly understand the coaching staff for Iowa State and wanting to have a conversation and have the captain on the floor go discuss this with the up official. Coach. Christy Johnson Lynch up having a couple of words now for folks who are unfamiliar like what determines a throw from a non-throw and this is the attempt right there you can't hit, pull it back behind your head with force like that and so that was what call, was called if it wasn't called earlier and it was on an Iowa State Cyclone and Tierney Jackson there was a yellow card given because of that break in the action And so, yeah, I appreciate from Joe Litch on the sideline saying, hey, let's use that as fire for our side. Davis comes up short, point for the Cyclones. Foot line. Get enough on that one with one option though throughout that rally and where London Davis is coming from is coming from a long way on the floor to go back and attack that that ball and now it smart play from Caroline Bien really had nothing to work with within that and that's just showing her creativeness also this Jayhawks team ability to come up with something out of nothing out of system her left hand that has played throughout her entire career wearing the Kansas jersey from nearby Overland Park, Kansas. Decided to stay close to home. Got her time. Davis. Point though for the Cyclones. They send it right back over. <laughs> bang, bang play and Lily Waffles wisely. 
says, hey, I can find the opening right just like you did. Not back in base position, so has that opening in left back. Freshman Emily Bobbitt in to serve. Gets the ace. Cyclones with a lead here in this third set. First service ace for the Cyclones. Uh, of the game for Iowa State that they had to say, hey, we've got to continue to pick that up a notch in this third set if they want to come back in this match. Two sets done right now. Bobbitt a little too strong there, so it's the risk reward. You serve aggressive and sometimes you don't reap the benefits as the error will send it right back over for the Jayhawks. In Burns, Lafayette, Indiana native, back at the service line for Kansas. A swing by Jackson. Just fired into the stands, Point Kansas. And there, getting the kill. Sophomore libero, Reagan Burns. All Big 12 rookie team selection a season ago. Van Gorp. Davis. Nice up. Davis with the hammer. Wow. That first dog. And then once again, I mean, it's a set selection to go right back to Davis. A little bit more height on that set. Works deep into the court, cross court. Strong connection and trust between Cameron Turner and Ryan Davis. Davis, a little too strong. Point Cyclones did not take a touch. Coach Bouchard's going to go pull a challenge. Quickly over to the head coach and says there was a touch. Conversation real quick with the down official with the green card in his hand just to make sure the touch but he's going to dispute this but I don't know if it was Mayhawk certainly thought so and pleaded with their head coach to pull the challenge coach Ray Bouchard hopping up with the green card but something you notice about him on the bench is he never looks too high or too low even in the moments where maybe as a coach you're frustrated with the call he still looks very cool calm and collected to me that's the way he approaches everything I mean you know that's consistency from coach Bouchard certainly Great intent, and you listen when he speaks. I mean, it's certainly one of those things. And up here, I think so. Now, on second glance of this, I think there is a touch. You look at the the, the hands, but does the spin of the ball, does the angle of the ball jump off of the hands? Those are some of the things that you look for with a touch, no touch. But is it clear and convincing evidence? Well, Forest Family Volleyball Arena certainly applauded, erupted, and thinks that there is enough. We have a big video board here. Fans right behind us are all doing the touch motion. <laughs> Call has been reversed. Rachel Van Gorp just got a little piece of it. Point Kansas. Well, and so Coach Bouchard then gets to keep that challenge. Retain the charge. challenge. If you win it, you win it. Good call there by the Jayhawks leader. Burns at the service line once again. And Gorp. El Naughty. El Naughty. Stone Street digs it up. Can't keep it in play. Jackson with the kill. Ernie Jackson, the Tulsa, Oklahoma native, West Virginia transfer. Coming in and putting her stamp on this game. Five kills now on the night, hitting 455. A team for two straight seasons in blocks back in West Virginia. A little too strong there. There was a touch. It is called, though, that a touch was taken. Point for KU. Yeah, Chrissy Dressing Lynch asked 
her team and said, yep, I got that one. And Faith Irondi said, clearly gets that one off the hand at the plane of the net. That set was pretty from Cameron Turner. Against the grain, no one thought that ball was going to go there. He with the serve. Irondi. El Nani goes cross court. <laughs> Just slicing and dicing. Cool double digit performance. Double, double, 10 kills, 12 digs. I, El Nadi, have yourself a night. 10 kills, 12 digs, hitting 296. That time and error, though, will lead to a point for the Cyclones. Jackson back to the service line. El Naughty denied. What a block by the Cyclones. Kirsten Smith, I think that's her fourth block that she's been involved in. A passive performance for her saying discipline. Watch that release. Bit with her fourth block. Durandi. Overpass. Durandi. Sent right back over by Patak. Deep shot. Falls. Point Cyclones. The awareness from Bobbitt, the freshman, knew exactly where to put that ball on the third contact. Really well done there. Now Jackson back at the service line once again. 3-0 scoring run for the Cyclones. Attack. Put right back down by El Nadi. Continuing her hot play here on this Wednesday night. Quick off the trampoline, and quick gather step. Ayel Nadi, just three kills, hit 222 against UCF last match. Is there as an ace? Kansas takes the two point lead here. Aya El Nadi getting it done in all facets of the game. Nadi does lead this team in aces. Also among the leaders in the Big 12, top three. Attack. Rondi off the block. Swanson. Stone Street gets there. Swanson. Stone Street again. Somehow kept in play. Great rally. Swanson stuffed at the net. Cyclones win a big rally. One of the longest we've seen throughout this. And Highlighted by a couple of exceptional digs from Stone Street. It ends it with a block, but if it wasn't for, without the play of Stone Street on the back row and off 13 digs. Iowa State has coined Libero U because of tremendous back row Liberos at Iowa State and, and Brooks, Brooks Stone Street, one of the top 10 all time for the Cyclones. That one out of play, last touch by Patak. 10-10 scoreline here in the third set. Your setter Morgan Brandt back to serve for the Cyclones. Oh, stuffed at the net. Swanson with the block. A couple of times now that Ryan Swanson's had a swing, couldn't terminate kill, but what she does, she makes up for it with the plane of the net with her blocking ability. Kansas with the one point lead. Swanson with six kills. 
two blocks, sitting 136 on the evening. There's Duckworth in. Point Maya, Kansas, yeah, though. Maya Duckworth, a key player for Iowa State, has been out due to an injury. And good news for the Cyclones. Miss hits this one tough to be on the sidelines for a couple of sets and then come in and take a big swing. But that is good news for the Cyclones to have her back. Hendricks Walker getting in on the action. Outside Maya Duckworth, though, did not play. The last three matches was a game time decision, according to the staff, due to an ankle injury. This team, though, at 2.79 kills per set since Gonzalez season ending injury. Big point for KU, though. Two point lead for the Jayhawks. Iono getting it done. I haven't seen the set selection in that zone. A little quick behind, but. To still know that is going to continue to work and be available. Speaking of quick sets, how about Hendricks Walker? In fourth now for both teams able to first ball side out, run their middles quick. Hendricks Walker came into this one with a 376 attack percentage. Best on the team, seventh in the Big 12. You can see why. Service error, though, from Brooks Stone Street leads to a point for the Jayhawks. Kind of midway through this third set, who's going to continue to increase their level of play in sets one and two? It's been the Jayhawks. Can they continue to do it here in this third set? Airline BN. Davis off the block. Duckworth. Davis, smart play, point Kansas. London Davis now with seven kills. Hitting 211, one dig, two blocks as KU takes a three point lead. Eastern with Big Noon kickoff live from Columbus, followed by Nebraska Ohio State at noon only on Fox. And only here on FS1, you can see London Davis rack up another kill for Kansas as they take a four point lead here in the third set. Kansas continue to get that offense from the right side because they like that matchup too against the the blockers on the left side against Iowa State. So we're continuing to go to that. And that's something that Chrissy Johnson Lynch thought that they would try to exploit, and they are doing so. El Naughty. Stone Street, so good. Van Gorp. Van Gorp tries again. Does go out of play. That play gets extended and tremendous awareness from Reagan Burns, the libero on the back row from Kansas. So exactly where she was on the floor to say, hey, if that ball is shoulders up, that one's going to go wide. And that's exactly what it did. And another milestone victory for another Kansas Jayhawk. And Cameron Turner has hit a thousand career digs. And we talked about her filling up the stack sheet, another milestone for a senior veteran. And that's tremendous. And that's a setter that has a thousand career digs. There's a lot of defensive players and liberos that might not get to that point. And Cameron Turner does it as a setter. Cameron Turner with nine digs in this match. Came in third on the team, averaging just under 2.8 digs per set. Once again, just has had, had an incredible career. Big 12 setter of the year was an All-America honorable mention selection a season ago. All Big 12 second team and all Big 10, Big 12 rookie team in her sophomore and freshman campaigns. 
Also played basketball back in high school. Was first team all state of both volleyball and basketball. To give you an idea of Cameron Turner's athleticism, which you see in all phases here on the volleyball court. And a great story of how Kansas is the only Division I team to recruit her. The other team was Washburn, a great Division II team, but from Topeka, Kansas. And grew up watching Anise Havili, who's in the, the Hall of Fame at Kansas and wanted to, to come here. Cameron Turner now with 1,000 career digs, surpassed 3,000 career assists back at the beginning of the season in September, tied a career high 59, I believe you mentioned it earlier, against Purdue, and continues to shine defensively and offensively for the Jayhawks. Duckworth back in for Iowa State, and Gorp. El Naughty, Stone Street gets there. Little miscue, El Naughty somehow sends it over. Duckworth. Slammed down by Jackson. Point Cyclones. But sure, there might have been four contacts within that rally, but play goes on and continue to stick with it. And Tierney Jackson with the overpass kill. That ends a 4-0 scoring run that Kansas was on. El Naughty. Van Gorp. El Naughty. On the slide, Jackson. Point KU out of play. Five point lead here for the Jayhawks with Reagan Burns back to serve. Iowa State team hitting 132, falling off since they were hitting over 500 there midway through set number one. Jackson tries again, gets the point this time. A strong side from Jackson, and that time able to get to hit it off the hands of the block before it's fully pressed. Up to that point, though, I think Kansas has done a good job, a better adjustment of getting some top positive touches at the plane of that, not necessarily terminating blocking, but positive touches that has led to Kansas' first and second set victory. El Naughty, oh, that's long. a little too strong. <laughs> Iowa State trying to get a little rally going here late in this third set. And Gorp with the floater. Patak. Schmidt gets the kill. Point Cyclones. Tremendous read on the back row to pick up that dig, to extend that rally for Iowa State. Rio scoring run now here for the Cyclones. One of those teams that just is never going to give up and, and certainly indicative of their season, losing one of their best players, an All-American, and Gonzalez to a knee injury. El Nani puts an end to that 3-0 run, though. Point for the Jayhawks. However, to your point, this Iowa State team losing three starters within 24 hours just a couple weeks ago when they played Houston back on October 9th. Have had to figure out adjustments in the lineup. Coach Johnson Lynch having to find other ways to make it work as Durandi makes it work. And she said, sometimes I, I don't have it big as a notebook. This year it's a pretty big notebook and saying, hey, what can we do with our lineup? Who can we put in? And, and certainly they get Maya Duckworth back and we're seeing her in this match. They're hopeful to get Pam McCune back. But having to play with some pieces, and but she does love their mindset. They've continued to go to work, sticking together. A little miscue there. Send over, though, by the Cyclones. Put back. Put down. Three point lead now for Kansas. S smooth, the true freshman, Patak, and it, it's a combination of things. It's her contact point, the physicality, but it's the speed, the pop, the fast arm swing. Yeah. 
of the back row. Durandi denied. Reese Patak with the block. Something about a solo block, you know. I mean, you're, you're up there in this one. Just discipline release from Patak. Not giving up with that play. And the freshman feeling good about that one. Looking ahead, these two teams will actually meet again as in Big 12 play, you play four teams twice. So they play each other in the regular season finale on November 29th. But when you look at the road ahead for both these squads versus the Kansas Jayhawks, I mean, you look at a Utah team that's playing incredibly well. They were not a squad that a lot of folks coming into the season maybe had circled, but they found a way. You've got 13th ranked Arizona State. I think Coach Bichard mentioned to us they feel like some of their toughest sledding lies ahead. And Utah, I mean, you cannot look past them. Currently, they're focused on the Cyclones tonight, but the Utes come in, and you talk about offense. I mean, watch Saturday at 1 p.m., because that is going to be pretty epic between those two teams battling it out. Meanwhile, for Iowa State, they have a battle with Kansas State coming up on the 27th, that Sunday. Then you've got a couple of ranked opponents in Baylor and TCU. So things ahead don't get much easier for this Iowa State team either. They also play a couple of those matchups on the road, difficult environments as you look at playing at Baylor and TCU. Yeah, but they get another shot at Kansas State. They went on the road in Manhattan and lost in a, a reverse sweep in Manhattan in a five-set battle. And so I think they're looking forward to facing the Wildcats flat, cats again. And then with Maya Duckworth back into the lineup and maybe getting Pat Pam McCune back at that point. But opportunities on the board, and that's the thing with many ranked teams in the Big 12. You say, hey, we have an opportunity to get some marquee victories still within the schedule. Nice D. Schmidt. Both teams laying it all on the floor. Bob it. Durandi. In the back row, El Naughty. Diving play, it's off the net. Incredible rally going. Bobbitt tries again. Swanson still in play. Patak. Everything that rally a ton to unpack. But how about the set selection? Cameron Turner against the grain. When rallies get extended like that, Oftentimes, setters will go with a safe bet, not Cameron Turner. She says, hey, I'm going to trust that my freshman Reese Patak is still going to be with me on the slide against the grain for the winner. And that's what keeps the defense off balance just enough to find the opening. But Bryn McGee on the back row and right back making defensive plays throughout that rally. At times, it's off the hands for Durandi. Point Cyclones. Patak, though, now with seven kills. Hitting 238, also four solo blocks. I mean, my goodness, what she's doing at the net right now is something to be seen. Morgan Brandt back to serve now as the Cyclones try to extend this match. How about the block party? Durandi fired up with the kill and then the block saying, hey, I've seen this enough. I'm going to put it into this and stays home, stays disciplined. Perfectly timed. Another block, Durandi. How about the swing on the right side, Lily Wackeltz. Continuing to fight are the Cyclones just now down two points to Kansas trying to fight and call their way back to extend this match. 3-0 scoring run for Iowa State as they hang around here in this third set. Two-point deficit to make up after this. So trail by two sets in this match. But these are two, and you've mentioned it, Jill, just incredible coaches that are so well respected in the field and they've done so much for both these programs. 16 NCAA tournaments to 12. And you look at the program records, winning as coach in Kansas history. Meanwhile, Christy Johnson Lynch, one away from tying 
the third in terms of conference wins record in her career. Here's a list of who's ahead of her in the Big 12. John Cook, pretty good company, you'd say. Faith Durandi, right there, ready to go alongside Hendricks Walker. Now a 4-0 scoring run. This finds himself down by one now at Iowa State, continuing to say, hey, I'm not going to be fooled. We've seen this slide enough tonight, making that adjustment. Out of system here. Bien gets a much needed kill for Kansas, ending the 4-0 scoring run and giving the Jayhawks a two-point lead. And we've seen different combinations and who's gonna get it done on the outside 10. They had just checked in Caroline Bien, a play before that on the outside to take swings. And the senior comes through with a sharp shot. The freshman Heidi Devers now coming in to serve here for the Jayhawks. Typically utilized in that serving specialist role last played on October 12th against Cincinnati. Big moment for one of the youngsters on this Kansas roster. Durandi. Durandi. Iono. Nice up. Bien. What a scramble at the net. Durandi. That time, the Jayhawks couldn't quite dig it out. What a play, though. Players making exceptional defensive plays on the back row. A couple featured within this rally, but then it was wise to go deep cross court from Durandi. We've seen that a number of times from her throughout this match. Leading the Cyclones in the kill category. Paula Kaischlack back to serve. Bien. High to Van Gorp, sent back over. And Gorp again. Flying out of the back row, but no. <laughs> and Hendrix <laughs> Walker says, I don't think so. No block bigger than that for the Cyclones. I mean, a solo, not fooled at all by the back row attack from flying in. Say, nope, I got that one. And we're all tied up. Huge block by Hendricks Walker to bring this third set level. However, there is going to be a challenge laid out. It might be challenging a net violation perhaps throughout this rally. And I think it might have happened earlier within the rally because the net was shaking. But was it the ball on the attack? I think they were thinking it was when... I believe it was a Caroline Bien attack, and was it a Dara net violation from Iowa State? I didn't see enough live, but that is the, the question. Kansas head coach Ray Bouchard, one for one with his challenges so far this evening. There was the block from Hendricks Walker that ended the point. I didn't see it. I think this play is going to stand here, but you can certainly understand why you go pull the challenge. No net violation is called, so the point does stand. Cyclones tie it up here at 23 apiece in the third set. Paula Kaischlack back to serve again. Had one ace and four digs against BYU. I set to be in. Nice defensive play, but sent right back down. Wachholz gets the kill. Tremendous awareness from Wachholz. And now, just like that, set point for Iowa State. How about the ability to just persevere? So resilient. Timeout called on the floor. Take another look. This one you thought the Cyclones were down and out, down two sets to none. Kansas looked in complete control, but not so fast. 
Emily Wachholz coming to life with a couple of kills here in this set. 3-0 scoring run right now for the Cyclones. Wachholz with five kills, one dig, hitting 188 on the night. Player who's been in a little bit of a rut recently. Four kills, hit 83 against Texas Tech, but has had big moments this season. 21 kills, hit 395 against Syracuse a couple weeks back. Had a hot streak in September. Six matches with 10-plus kills. Coming up with a critical point for the Cyclones team on a 3-0 run. Looking to close out this third set with backs against the wall. What's been the difference that you've seen for this Iowa State team during this recent stretch? I mean, I think they just continue to stay gritty. I mean, they really have never backed down. And then Faith Durandi, as of late in this third set, has been critical. She said, I'm going to refuse to get, you know, they're going to go to my zone. And I well, came up with a couple big blocks, two blocks, three digs, ten kills to lead Iowa State. And they're making plays deep in two sets. Set point here for the Cyclones. Trying to push this to a fourth. Bien. And just like that, gains all the momentum on their side. Say, hey, we're not, we're down, but we're not out. And we're going to continue to play. The grit, the resilience on display here in Lawrence, Kansas. The Cyclones forcing set number. It's late into that third set. How is Kansas going to respond after dropping that set? They have to refocus, and that's the beauty of volleyball. Here we are, 0-0. Zero, zero. Turn, the, turn the tide over. I mean, flip the card. It's a fresh start in this fourth set. We talked about how these two teams have had some epic battles in recent history. They split the last 10 matchups in this series last year, both five-setters. So could we have five sets in store? You're not looking like you're ready to stay up late for that, Jill. Oh, I am. I'm ready for it. Let's do it. <laughs> we do have some coffee on hand. <laughs> not that 8.30 is that late here, people. We're not that old. <laughs> I don't know. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Ready to get underway here in set number four. Ninth ranked Kansas hosting Iowa State. Interesting, you saw the 10th ranked team in the country, Purdue, a squad that the Jayhawks beat earlier this season. A huge win, 3-1 to one back in September. Their only setback of the season was a sweep by Creighton. Being swept, I should say. Deep shot, nicely delivered by Hendricks Walker. Great pick up on the back row. The defense from Iowa State continuing and then working hard in transition up quick and we continue to stay with the setter and then be available. Overpass, she's tapped right back down. Waffold says thank you very much. A little gift, if you will, and a quick start <laughs> for Iowa State. As I mentioned, carrying that momentum over. A 4 0 scoring run, I'll make it six points in a row. Bien, ready to end that scoring run for Cyclones. And had a long way to travel with this, six to with it. Bien with a very efficient evening for her on the outside pin. Eight kills, just one error, hitting 368. Van Gorp goes long. One KU, 2-2 two, two score here in the fourth set. Again, back to the service line, hitting 368 to your point. 13 digs, though, as well, getting involved defensively. El Naughty. Kansas calling for a touch, but it is called a point for the Cyclones out of play. Coach Bichard looking like he's ready to challenge that call. A lot of trust in his team to say, yeah, I'm going to go right over and grab that because they told me to. They believe they saw a touch of the plane of the net. Live, I, I didn't see enough on that. I didn't think it, it, it got hands, but we're going to take a look at this swing. Oh, yeah, there it is. Indeed. Coach Bouchard, one for two so far in challenges tonight. 
this call does look like there's evidence to be overturned. I think there's enough for sure. And certainly the fans here, the Kansas fans agree <laughs> as they applaud. As you can tell the moment that they see it on the scoreboard, on the big board here in Horse Family Volleyball Arena, the home fans agree. Call is going to be reversed. There was a touch, so it's a point for the Jayhawks. And a critical one is they're trying to regain that momentum after the Cyclones closed out the third set really strong. The one point lead now for Kansas going the other way with Vienne back at the service line. Early still here, but Kansas sitting 667 after slow going. Both teams sitting in the 100s in that gritty third set. Cyclones regaining some of that momentum. The perfect pass, all options available for Iowa State. Again, in that two setter system, so three live arms at all time. Just working to try to find that opening on the net, at the net. Davis came flying out of the right side, and she gets the kill. London Davis, when she gets going for Kansas, can be that X factor. She just opens things up for her teammates when she can provide that offensive firepower. A little off kilter there. Jackson sends it over. El Naughty. Van Gore just stuffed at the net. Davis puts it back down. And there was a ton of communication. I was watching the bench after that third set loss between Davis and Patak, and those two teamed up together. Ace from Reagan Burns extends the Kansas lead. Point for the Cyclones on the swing from Wachholz. Emily Bobbitt back in to serve, the freshman setter for Iowa State. Does have one ace on the night. El Naughty. Pulled off the block. Uh, Tierney Jackson working hard laterally, but just couldn't get that left hand into the floor. Nadi continues to lead all players in that kill category, continuing to be aggressive. Schmidt, great defensive play by BN. Jackson puts it down, point Cyclones. And one of those aspects that Coach Richard said, you know, with three live attackers, you have to be stopped on defense and then make a move because they're coming at you, you know, in three different zones every time. Van Gore with a tough serve. El Naughty. Hendricks, or Durandi rather, on the far side. Point Jayhawks, three point lead here in this fourth set for the block. I just couldn't get a lot of top spin on that ball. So misses the hands, didn't have enough spin on it. El Naughty with 14 kills, 15 digs on this double double affair for her. All surpassing 1,000 career kills. <laughs> Error there by Durandi, point Jayhawks. And one of the strongest rotations has been with Aya Alnadi going back from the service line and hasn't necessarily resulted into ace, but aces, but a broken play there that led to the point. That time a little too strong. 
Service error leads to a side out for the Cyclones. Jimmy Jackson, Jimmy Jackson back to serve. And she can put pressure from the service line. A, a flat float. We've seen her very up her speeds and placement as well throughout this match. We've seen her do short, but also deep. One time an ace. Ace for Tierney Jackson, her first of the match. That's the deficit here for Iowa State. They now trail by just two, continuing to scrap for every point. for the Jayhawks. It's continuing to bring in Hedy Devers to, as a serving specialist. Your freshman that goes back, a flat float serve. Deep shots from Hendricks Walker. Touch called Point Iowa State. We trail by two here, continuing to hang around. Morgan Brandt. Hendricks Walker with nine kills, hitting 400. Once again, top 10 hitting percentage in the Big 12 coming into this. The end, big swing. Nice up by Burns. Bien gets the point for Kansas. Well, Bien on the first attempt went sharp angle, but Tonsi was doing a wonderful job just sitting right off of that left shoulder of her middle blocker. And then, so what does Bien do? She adjusts then the angle of what she attacks at. Cameron Turner, team captain with a serve. Durandi gets the kill. The walk of the tight wire was Brandt up there. Comes, she's from the back row, but watch how, how, how she has to elevate. Beautiful set. Durandi leads Iowa State with 11 kills. Three digs, two blocks as well. Oh, what a play. Cameron Turner, really crafty. Great dump. <laughs> And just when you don't expect it, right? Cameron Turner says, oh, I still have this in my bag of trips. Finds that donut on the floor. Kansas with a three-point lead. Yeah, and just couldn't quite get there. Hendricks Walker with the kill. All well, about the speed of that play. That's said. That it's not fully stopped in time. Hendricks Walker with double digit kills. The second match in a row. She came off a 10 kill performance against Texas Tech in that victory. Hit 667 in that match. She's KU gets the point. Burns back to the service line, sophomore libero, Lafayette, Indiana. Oh, what a swing. Rachel Van Gorp with some force. A oh, perfect pass, and they'd be getting production from the middle, so then the Kansas block has to stay true to the middle, has to jump oh, here, and then that lays enough, and so that's that seam that Van Gorp just hits right, th right through. And Gorp, not with her most efficient night, does have five kills though. Bobbitt with a tough serve, sent over though. Point Kansas. Brid McGee back to serve for the Jayhawks. Jackson. 
El Naughty off the block and down. Point Jayhawks, El Naughty with 15 kills, matches her season high. Job of offensively and defensively, and so blocks his seven blocks. 10 kills and doing it in a multitude of ways too offensively. He's sticking with her center, being available as quick attacks through different zones in the middle. And you can see that connection between Grant and her is very strong. And transfer into the program is playing big for the Cyclones once again. Hendricks Walker with double digit kills in five of the last six matches. Make that six of the last seven with her performance here tonight. Van Gorp. Big up from McGee. El Naughty gets the kill. Kansas flying high here in the fourth set. How about that defense from Caroline Bien on the back row? She do Bren McGee and in the set. It was a, from the platform of Caroline Bien. He's up there. Rio scoring run for the Jayhawks leads to Iowa State head coach Christy Johnson Lynch calling the timeout for Cyclones trail by five in the fourth. I think that they went back and they said, hey, we got to focus right here, right now. And they certainly have done that. And a multitude of players have done that. Nine kills, no, no errors on 13 attempts. So it's not only just with their first contact to give Cameron Turner all of her options, but also each player picking up their level of play. Schmidt gets the kill for the Cyclones, though. Successful timeout for Johnson Lynch. That's exactly what you want to see for Iowa State is first ball side out right out of that timeout to say, hey, we did this in set number three. We can do it again in set number four from come from behind. It's not out of our reach yet. Midway through this fourth set. And Gorp to serve. Out of system, El Naughty off the block, kept alive. Durandi. Does end up going out of play, point to Kansas. And Naughty with a dig. On the slide, Patak. Point Cyclones. Point Cyclones. Jackson, Just out of play on that one as Tierney Jackson goes back to the service line. Jackson with eight kills, hitting 350, did have an ace. Double, double. 10 kills, 14 digs in this match. And paints the sideline, and Cameron Turner held onto that set, thinking you were going to go back again to the tag, but then to the outside pin for Caroline Bion, spreading the offense nicely. Cameron Turner. Again, with her first double, double since October 3rd when this team played Colorado. McGee with the up, BN. Durandi off the block. Turner trying the dump. BN slams it with authority. Jayhawks lead by six. The Kansas court defense continuing to dig balls and then offensively working in transition. And that's a wise shot from a veteran seeing the floor. Verandi denied. And how about the setter getting in on the block party? And the solo, we talked about her ability to fill up the stat sheet. Does just that. She said, hey, I know that I'm here by myself. I'm going to dive in. Big smile from Cameron Turner. Cameron Turner can do a little bit of everything for this Jayhawks team as there is a timeout here in the fourth. You do have to point out that Iowa State outside Nayeli Gonzalez led all players in that first match. The Cyclones were able to clinch with 31 kills. Not having her on the floor is just detrimental for the Cyclones team. 
as Hendricks Walker just goes a little bit wide. I think we're going to see a challenge just to question if a ball was in or out. There is going to be a challenge from Christy Johnson Lynch. And she can't take him back to aim. So, hey, if there was a question, you might as well take a look at it. And also, it just allows for her to have a, a further discussion with her team and also break the momentum because Kansas has shown on their home floor and the crowd gets live and they start to get the momentum. You just want to put a pause to it. Everybody sit down and then but just take another look at this. I think this is going to be... Probably quick because I think you do see blue in between there. So I don't think this is going to be overturned, but certainly understand why Chrissy Johnson Lynch does pull the challenge card because you can't take him with you. And you're nearing the end of this fourth set trying to battle to a fifth. The call is confirmed. It was out of play, so the point remains with the Jayhawks. They're now four away from closing out this match. 4-0 scoring run as well for Kansas as they've gotten hot here down this late stretch of set number four. Heidi Devers, the freshman libero defensive specialist back to serve. That one off the block and down. Kill for Durandi once again. Durandi with her 12th of the match, leading the Cyclones. Iono playing Cyclones. Four touches. Morgan Brandt back to serve. Junior setter out of Sumner, Iowa. Bien finds the corner. One of the best primary passers and defenders that you'll find in an outside hitter position is Caroline Bien, but also too when she attacks, she has everything in her toolkit. She has a variety of shots and just sees the floor exceptionally well. Tough from Hendrix Walker. She has been a bright light for the Cyclones throughout this match. You missed one a couple plays ago, but other than that, I mean, and she's had a tremendous, tremendous match. And interesting enough, in the third set, when Iowa State came back, is 22 to 17, so they're nearing that mark right here. Iono with the put down. And the question for Kansas is what was the other middle that was going to step up? It's been Iono tonight with the absence of Toyosi on a banjo. Iono playing in 13 sets coming into tonight making critical plays down the stretch for this Jayhawks team. And Gorp does touch the floor, point Cyclones. And <laughs> Gorp just had a hang in the air. A pancake working on the side of the Jayhawks. And Gorp with just her sixth kill, but 20 digs. Match point coming here for Kansas. Big opportunity here as the Jayhawks look to close out their eighth consecutive win. Remaining perfect in Big 12 play. It's going to be a touch. Error. Yeah, they had a touch. It is going to be a touch. So that's going to be a point for the Cyclones. Iowa State stays alive. Bobbitt. Touch was called. So going back to serve here is Emily Bobbitt, the freshman setter, trying to keep this match alive. 
Just get the hand of El Nadi, the, the left hand.